Welcome to New York Got Game. All right, we are back here at New York Got Game for the final episode of 2023. I can't believe this year has flown by, but here we are. And this is going to be a fantastic episode. It's going to be all about the New York Knicks, and we've got plenty to talk about with the Knickerbockers because, boy, this team had a pretty exciting finish in terms of at least roster construction to the 2023 portion of their season. A lot of talk about, got two great guests who've already been up here before. They're joining me again. We're not going to waste any time. Let's get right to it. The Knicks are heating up. The New York Knicks have wrapped up the 2023 portion of their schedule, and the team is one that plays hard and looks like a playoff team right now in the middle of the Eastern Conference. However, as the calendar shifts to 2024, can the Knicks go further than they did in 2023, especially after they made a trade to end the 2023 portion of their season? Will we see new Knicks in the new year? Well, before this season, here on New York Out Game, I had the pleasure of previewing the Knickerbocker season with my guys Jonathan Macri of Knicks Film School and CP the franchise of Knicks Fan TV. Both are back in the studio and they join me now. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Oh, you know, just another Saturday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> just another afternoon, just another way to end the year talking about the Knicks and listen. If you haven't seen it now, there's a clip that went viral with these guys in studio. We were about to tape this episode when news came down that the Knicks traded for OG Ananobi. We had a quick reaction video to that, guys, but I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper if we're going to look at the Knicks and look back at 2023. Now we got to talk about this trade because this is probably the biggest Knicks news of the year. I'm going to start with you guys in this because there's a lot of reaction to this trade that we're seeing from fans. We're seeing it on social media. One of the things that I've been seeing is, well, the Knicks went and got a guy in OG Ananobi that isn't really an impact guy. You know, really isn't a needle mover, a, a deal breaker, you want to say, in this situation. What do you guys make of that statement and reaction to fans who feel that way? And was this a good trade for the Knicks to close out the year of 2023? I'll start with you, j Man. I think guys can make impacts in different ways and it's impossible to for me at least divorce context from discussing an impact of a player um the knicks are built around jalen brunson and julius randall two players who are not strong defensively they both have their issues all that into the floor um and so in order to make that work you were always going to need some sort of a versatile defensive piece that could tie that all together they got that here and in terms of O.J. Ananobi's defense, I mean, he made an all-defense team last season. Probably is on pace to make another one this year. And even in the three years before that, he got votes for all-defense. So on that end of the floor, when you factor in the versatility, the different players you could guard, I think you love that. And on the offensive end, it's really O.G.'s kind of the player that they've wanted R.J. Barrett to be throughout R.J.'s career in New York in that he can give you some on-ball creation. If you throw him the ball late in the clock situation, he can make something happen. But more importantly than that, he has been a dependable three-point shooter for some time now. Um, I could envision Randall kickouts, Brunson kickouts to OG Ananobi. Uh, he's between 37 and 38 percent this year. He's been around that for pretty much his entire career. I think from that perspective, no, you didn't trade for Joel Embiid or even Donovan Mitchell. But in terms of figuring out what you have now with this core, I'm not sure that there was a better player out there for them to get absent a true superstar, which, again, I'm not sure that guy was going to be available before this summer at the earliest. Right. I think that's sometimes where you see some limitations from fans when they talk about hoops and we're looking at the Knicks in a situation that's like, okay, if you make this trade, it's got to be for a star. This is not a trade for a star, CP. This is a trade that I know you thought was a good one. We saw the reactions from you and Macri to this trade. OG, good fit for the Knicks here? And you hit it right on the head. Fit. We, we have to think about fit. And, and one of the things we have to change is I think we have to change our mindset in terms of landing that big fish. Who's that guy? That savior's not going to come here. Joel Embiid's not going to come here. Giannis isn't going to come here. LeBron James is, is in Los Angeles. You know, Kevin Durant is in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. There's no guy that's going to come here and just completely change the Knicks' fortunes. And so what they have to do is I think we as fans have to reprogram the way we look into building this team. Take a look at the Boston Celtics, right? They've had Tatum and Brown for how many years now? Six years plus? And take a look at the surrounding, the supporting cast that's been around them. They've had Kyrie Irving, 
They've had uh, Kem Kemba Walker. They've had Al Horford twice. Now they bring in Porzingis. They bring in Drew Holiday. And all the while, they're competing. They're, they're hovering near the top of, of the East and in championship contention, but they're still never satisfied, and they're still tinkering with the roster. So I say that to say we shouldn't necessarily look for that home run swing anymore mm -hmm. and look for the singles, the doubles, the triples that will help get them to that point. As Jonathan said, you have Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, two average to below average defenders on their best nights. You've got to fortify those guys with strong defenders, efficient shooters, and the Knicks, when you look at this Knicks team right now, they had holes all over the place when it came to inconsistent shooting. RJ playing a role into that. Mm -hmm. Their defense, porous. Without Mitchell Robinson, even worse. There's so many holes. The wing depth, the backup four the, in the front court. There were so many holes there that they've had to address them one at a time. Yeah. Peel it back, address it one at a time, and find better fits as you move forward. Yeah, fit matters, guys, right? Yeah. Fit matters a lot in this situation. I think that's why you guys had the reaction you did to this. When you look at, you brought up the Boston Celtics. Yeah. When you look at that team, a smaller move that they made a couple of years ago, I was talking with you guys about this off air. Derek White, that's a move that was not a home run move, to use your term here, CP. Singles and doubles and gets it done. Lasting on OG before we move on and look back at 2023, when you look at this deal for them getting OG, does this make you think about what this team can do next? And we'll yeah. talk about trades and stuff, but I think that has to be exciting for the Knicks fan when they're looking at the shaping of this roster. But it's what are the possibilities that it can do next with this team and this roster? Does that excite the both of you? It, it excites me. I mean, one of the most common questions I feel like I've gotten over the last year, really since Brunson came, and I, I bet you get a lot of this too, is, well, why can't we be our version of the 2004 Pistons, which is the team that people traditionally point to as the one where, no, they didn't have a top 10 player, although Billups, you know, finished top 10 in MVP a few times. Not a traditional fit. And look, I love Jalen Brunson more than anyone. Is he a true, like, top 10 guy in the traditional mold? No. Can he be the best player on a championship team? I think maybe. And I think now, with this trade, we may start to get that answer because to me, the, the, the Pistons, our version of the Pistons thing was never going to happen with the roster as it was constituted. You needed to still tinker if you wanted to try to see, look, Brunson, Randall, plus something else. Can it get there? I think this is one move. That said, and I know we're going to talk about it, yeah. still probably requires one more significant move. And hey, uh, they have all their first round picks to, to do that move. That, that I'm glad you brought that up there. That's where I'm going to go, CP, because that may be the most underrated part of this trade when you look at it. And we talked about this, which is that the Knicks only gave up a second round pick here, and they still have a lot of flexibility. As a Knicks fan, does that excite you knowing that that flexibility still exists going forward? Absolutely. And, and that's why I want to caution Knicks fans because other reactions that you're seeing out there is that, well, they pulled RJ and Quick back in a potential Donovan Mitchell move, and now they do that for a quote-unquote lesser play in OG Ananobi. But if you look at the parameters of the deal, I mean, Danny Ainge supposedly wanted multiple first-round picks, three firsts plus two swaps maybe. So it was a much larger deal and maybe even an OB top and on top of that. So it was a much larger deal in terms of what was out there in, in, with the Donovan Mitchell uh, trade. But now you have all your first-round picks still. You still have your Fournier contract that you can – you know, dangle in front of a team, and you still have, hey, maybe a team is interested in a Quinton Grimes. Maybe a team may be interested in a Dante DiVincenzo in the next offseason. You still have some depth pieces plus draft capital that you can potentially make. Maybe it's a draft day move to Cleveland for Donovan Mitchell, right? So, and, and that's why I say with this OG Ananobi trade, you can't look at it as, is this the trade that's going to take us to the top? You have to look at it as, is it fitting our needs? Yes. Is it checking that box there? And does it allow us flexibility to go get somebody else who can, again, move the ball forward a little bit more? And I think this does. All right. I think that it does. All right. So this is where the Knicks are. They end 2023 with a trade that had a reaction, different reaction. These guys had a happy reaction. Some fans not so happy, but we'll see. But I want to talk to you guys. I want to go back and look at the Knicks this season, right? Because before New Year's Day, they played 32 games. And I want to ask both of you, what do you make about how the Knicks, and it's obviously different now with this trade, but how they perform during the 2023 portion of their schedule? CP, what did you make of what you've seen of the Knicks up to this point before the trade for OG Ananobi? 
Yeah, I would say compared to last year, if you look at the the record, it's pretty comparable. They're about the same where they were last year through the, through 30 games. Uh, their all stars are playing like all star. You know, I put I put Brunson in that category. I speak it to his existence because he is one. And Julius Randle has been playing outstanding basketball. So those two guys have been your constants. The schedule hasn't been uh, pleasant for them. They've played one of the most road heavy schedules. A tough schedule when you think about the teams over 500 that they played. They they're still uh, six and 13 against teams over 500. So that part has been disappointing. Uh, the defense hasn't been there. It, it, even worse with the loss of, of Mitchell Robinson, the shooting up and down. Uh, you were looking for improvements from, you know, we talked about R.J. Barrett before, before the trade. Uh, came out the gates hot, shooting 43% from three, 21 points per game. October, he was great, uh, playmaking very well. And then this month, after the migraine, it was brutal. I mean, he was shooting 23% from three. Looked like he was forcing some shots there. So, again, it just made the roster look a little bit off, especially with the, the guard rotation, quickly's playing time becoming an issue. And so they were able to, they've been able to tread water through the end of this year, um, but it was hard to see how much more they could improve especially with the injury to Mitchell Robinson going into the second half w without a trade like this. Jay Mack, what do you make of what you saw from the Knicks in the 2023 portion of their schedule? CP just nailed it. It's impossible to talk about the Knicks and where they are at the end of 2023 without mentioning the Mitch injury. Um, when Mitch went down, they still had, it may have been fallen to 11th, but for all intents and purposes, a top 10 defense. Um, their offense, especially since the first six games when they couldn't get out of their own way, has been a top 10 offense um, throughout the entire season. It's, it's right around there now. So when I look at their, the, what they've done thus far, I have to break it into two different you know, segments. There's the segment where they had Mitchell Robinson, which is they were the team that we thought they were going to be. They were the team for the most part that we hoped that they would be, even with the losses to better teams. And then there's the game since. Now, in the game since, their defensive rating ranking has fallen to nearly the bottom of the league in, in these last 10 games or so. Um, but I think the fact that they have still managed to be a 500 team in that stretch tells you, okay, there's something to this team. They could still hold it together. They've gotten some quality wins during that stretch of time. But you also, I, I think, learned with this OG Ananobi trade happening today that they did not feel that this was going to be sustainable for much longer, which is why they, they went out and made this deal now. Yep, and that's exactly why that happened. Sometimes you've got to make moves. Speaking of making moves, CP, I wanted to ask you about this because anytime it comes to talk about Knicks basketball, there's always talks about trades. Now, we just had one. I get that that's <laughs> happened. Everybody looks to improve the roster that way. However, there can be internal improvement. That can happen. So i got to ask you, which players that are still on the roster yeah, yeah. <laughs> need to step their game up? Because I know before if I was going to ask you this, it might have been some players that are no longer on the roster. Yeah. But which players, when you look at this team now, need to step their game up? Well, at this moment, I'm looking at the two young players that you have active on the roster, and that's Quinton Grimes and that's Miles McBride. With the departure of R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly, those two guys now step up in this Knicks rotation. Their defense will be much needed. Can Quinton Grimes, can he show a little bit more? We've still been looking for Grimes to show a little bit more other than just a 3 and D floor. Is he going to pr provide some more playmaking? Because without Emmanuel Quickly with his second unit now, that second unit is going to need a guy that's going to get other guys in their spots and get involved. So it's going to be very important for both Quentin Grimes and Miles McBride to help generate that offensive flow that Emmanuel quickly was responsible for for that second unit. That's going to be a big loss. You know, make no mistake. No, no mistake about that. IQ brought a lot there. It'll be very interesting to bring up McBride to see yeah. what he can do with this opportunity that he may have now. Now, when you look at what this team, J Mac, has done in the first couple of months of this season, what player would you say is the team MVP right now? Who's the unquestioned? I, you, you give me this like, come on, Dex, you know the answer. Who's the team? Who's the MVP of the Knicks thus far at this point in the season? Listen, man, I, I'll take a softball if you throw it up to me. It's, <laughs> it's Jalen Brunson. Um, and look, that is with all due respect to Julius Randle. Uh, and you know what? Uh, look, I, I kind of maybe am not putting as much on his inclusion in the deal, but Emmanuel quickly too. Not the team MVP, that, that level, but quickly, you know, has saved their bacon in so many games coming in and giving them the spark that they need. So with all due respect to those players, Jalen Brunson is the head of the snake, and they go as he goes. And I think you saw that in the Orlando game where they were able to throw a lot of length at him. They were able to do some different things to bother his usual game. And you saw how much the Knicks offense struggled without Brunson being Brunson. Um, on the whole, though, you know, putting that game aside, he is, you know, in top 
25 or 30 percent in terms of efficiency at his position amongst point guards in the league. I think there have been some not so great moments on defense, but on the whole, I, I think there's been some good moments on defense, at least compared to last year. Um, he's assisting the ball more. I think he's passing better than ever. And he just provides the leadership that, like, you know, we wanted for 20 years yeah. here as Nick fans, where I think you, you, and I don't know if you agree with me on this, CP, but you feel confident that they are not going to get mired in some sort of losing streak without Mitchell Robinson yeah. or against a tough schedule. Because what can Brunson do? He could step in and score 50 points against the Phoenix Suns, you know, if you need him to. And that's just one example. Yeah, Brunson has been undoubtedly a great leader this season and throughout his time as a net. Go ahead. I was going to say on top of that, you know, going back to that first question and, and filtering into what Jonathan just said, the one thing that I have liked about this team is that they never really seem to let it go too much. Yeah. You know, they might have a letdown game, and then the next game their effort is much better. Julius and Jalen typically lead the way, and I think that's a good sign of their leadership with this team as well. Yeah, that's something that people should like as they go into 2024. CP, i got to ask you this because you and I talked right after the Mitchell Robinson injury and then we found out weeks later that okay he's likely done for the season we talked also about some options for the Knicks at center you had mentioned people to me like Kelly Olynyk. you had mentioned that before thinking about him as an option but now coming back in this trade for OG Ananobi the Knicks have purchased Achua have they solved the depth problem that you've spoken a lot about that they needed to fix at center especially with Mitch being out I think it's likely that they've done the best they could for now in, in acquiring Achua. You needed depth, right? Hartenstein was still going to keep that role. He's, he's gelled perfectly with his team over the last year and a half that he's been with them. But you needed depth. I love Taj Gibson, but you're putting a lot of responsibility on him to man a backup center role. And you just never know. Suppose Hartenstein goes down. Then you're, then you're marching for every it's, – it's completely out the window. You're cooked. So uh, I like the Achua pickup for that depth move. I did like Olenek as a potential trade piece because overall I am – concerned about the Mitchell Robinson injury because this is another year that you're going to be without your, your big time defensive anchor. Now he's only going to have locked 21 games this year. And so his durability is certainly a concern. Isaiah Hartenstein will be a free agent going right. into the offseason. And so depending on how he plays for the rest of the season, could he have earned himself a raise where the Knicks may choose to not sign him? So I think they need to address the center position, whether it's, you know, is a true a part of the, that solution? Is there a draft pick on the horizon? We'll see what happens with Jericho Sims. Now they have a little bit of options there, but it, it's certainly an important uh, position to address. Yeah, definitely an important position. And we'll see what they do. It's definitely important for them to address that position. We'll see what happens. Obviously, Jericho Sims hopefully is returning as well soon. Jay Mack, I'm curious about this with you, because when you evaluate this team as we near the halfway point of the season, and, again, this has shifted a bit with yeah, the trade. This sure. shifts some of the questioning here. But what concerns you most about this squad, and what do you think the Knicks must improve in terms of their team and their roster in order to improve on last year's playoff run? Yeah, I, look, I think um, – so let's look at this in light of the OG trade. Uh, the answer was going to be defensively. How do they uh, prop themselves up defensively? They got Ananobi. I think that makes them better defensively. At the same time, they also lost Quickly. Quickly is an immensely impactful defender, more in the team context than someone you're going to sick on the other team's best player and go, you know, shut that guy down. That's, that's not what Quickly was. Um, OG Ananobi will help. I still am curious as to the lineup combinations that get put out there. Removing Quickly from the equation makes it a little bit easier in terms of the minutes crunch, I think. Um, and it, it should alleviate because you're really this is kind of a two for one trade, even though you're getting Flynn back. And obviously there's, there's precious there, too. Um, I'm also curious moving forward to see how they function with Ananobi as an offensive piece, because the one criticism that I've always had and the numbers bear this out. If you look at the numbers with the three of them on the floor, R.J. Brunson and Randall, you know, the, the offensive numbers with them are good this year. They were good last year. You never got the sense that those three guys were amplifying one another. And I, I am even going to focus a little bit more on RJ and Julius Randle. They've been together for more than four years now. I've never gotten the sense that either of those guys make the other one better. And I'm not absolving Randle of Blaine, to be clear. That's some on Randle, that's some on RJ. I'm curious if, if bringing OG in, can he maybe develop a little bit more synergy with Brunson, mm -hmm. a little bit more synergy with Randle, and obviously more synergy with the starting five as a whole. Yeah, intrigued to see that going forward. That's something to definitely keep an eye on with the Knicks going forward. This question I have is definitely for the both of you, okay? And this this is a question I've prepped from before. 
we've been talking about trades nonstop. We've been talking to you guys about this the last couple of years. Knicks, we saw some rumored interest that has come out uh, in guard DeJounte Murray from mm -hmm. the Hawks. We've heard that. Now, with OG Ananobi on the roster, is he the type of player that you think would fit this Knickerbocker squad in 2024 and beyond? Start with you, J-Mac. Um, DeJounte Murray is a wonderful player. Extraordinarily talented. I feel a butt coming. <laughs> I feel, it seems like Look, a butt might be coming here. <laughs> I, I'm going to steal from a, a frequent podcast guest of mine, Fred Katz of The Athletic, who is fond of saying every move the Knicks make from here on in, the first question should be, how does that player fit with Jalen Brunson? And I think Jalen Brunson is good enough to warrant that being the discussion. So if that's the discussion point, well, then you look at DeJounte Murray. He is great for what he is. He is a good defensive guard for his size, very good defensive guard for his size. But he is still a point guard. He's a slight player. He can still, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, get taken off the dribble and get bullied into the post by a bigger guy. And you're, you just made this trade for OG Ananobi as the Knicks. It is very clear that you are at the point in your development where any moves you're making, you are making them in furtherance of trying to win a championship. Yeah. Even if there are moves to be made, that has to be your mindset. So I'm not sure why you would go out and get a player who you have questions about whether the, him and Brunson could stay on the floor together in playoff series against the Celtics and against the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, not saying that they can't go you know, offense at that shooting guard position if they make another trade, but have it be an elite, elite offensive player, right? And yeah. go all in on offense. Uh, you know, we all know who I'm talking about. He plays in Cleveland right now. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't see Murray as quite that level of player, and I don't see him as being able to defend uh, well enough, even given his capabilities at his size. All right, so that's a no for you. What about you, CP? Uh, do you li like the DeJounte Murray talk? Is that some guy, a guy that you would like to see with the Knicks? You know what? I've, I've gone back and forth on the Murray thing. Okay. Because as a player, a player profile, there's a lot to like about him. Plays good defense, he's got wingspan, yep. can play make, uh, bring some much-needed athleticism to this Knicks team. Uh, you know, a, a guy that can go out there and get buckets, right? So... The, the fit defensively with Brunson might be questionable, but also offensively, he can give them a third option that, you know, you can give it to. If, if a team takes those guys away in the playoffs, you give it to a guy like a DeJounte Murray, and, and maybe he can go out there and get a bucket for you. But there are question marks. And, and number one, number one, you know, the Hawks' urgency to, to trade him. How much better has he, has he made that Hawks team? I think you can also question how well does he play off of other stars. They brought him in to play off of Trey Young, and it hasn't been successful. They're already ready to trade him. Uh, there was talks that internally with Hawks management, there wasn't a 100% buy-in on bringing him, in, bringing him in. If you look at DeJounte Murray, the all-star version of him, 21 points, 9 rebounds, 2 steals with San Antonio, it was with him as the guy dominating the ball and playmaking from there. So if you bring him in with a Jalen Brunson, his catch-and-shoot numbers aren't great. Mm. You know, is it a situation where he's got to lead that second unit more as the guy? It's kind of like he's getting the opportunity to do so with the Hawks. So the, the, the fit offensively is a little bit tricky. And like Jonathan said, if you're going to go there, I think they go more offense. I think they complete the CAA reunion. Remember, <laughs> o, OG just switched oh, over. When OG man. switched over, it raised eyebrows. They're going to keep it pushing. No clutch. CAA Donovan Mitchell in the offseason. Oh, I man, we are getting into the agency. I, I think they bring Spider home, man. All right, there we go. Yeah. Well, this sets up nicely. You just heard yeah. CP talk about that. We are officially in trade season, guys, and for the fans out there, we're officially in trade season. We just saw this trade go down for the Knicks getting OG Ananobi. This is the time, guys, when I think we start to look at the NBA contenders and pretenders. The question I had initially thought about for this sure. situation to ask you guys was, do the Knicks need to shake up their roster at the trade deadline, going to get a big star or a smaller addition. I think OG Ananobi fits into that smaller addition. No shade to OG on that there. This is where we're going to have some fun. What are some of the, what is the player or the next moves? Both you guys have mentioned Donovan Mitchell. Is he that guy for you that would be the fit for the Knicks to make a move, whether it's at the deadline now, in the summer, I don't know when. Is that the next kind of move that the Knicks need to make when you look at them in terms of trades? Uh, you know, for me, first of all, I don't think Donovan Mitchell is getting traded before mm -hmm. the deadline. I, mm -hmm. I think especially give Cleveland a lot of credit. I mean, you want to talk about they've, they've sustained 
injuries to their uh, Garland and, and um, Mobley. And now Mitchell's been out for a little while, but although he just came back. Um, I think the rest of this year, not to, punt, not, not to defer the question, I think the rest of this year should be dedicated for the Knicks to answering the question you just asked, yeah. which is um, can this version of this team with Brunson and Randall as your kind of offensive bookends, an elite wing defender in Ananobi, let's figure they get the elite you know, defensive center back, whether it's Mitch or someone else, and then a non-star at the two. You know, or in, let's even go a step further, an offense first player at the two. Um, or maybe it's they reinsert Grimes in the starting lineup and go a little bit more defense in, in that respect, um, albeit a, a little bit small for the shooting guard. I, I think that they're probably done in terms of big moves for this, for this year would be my gut feeling. And I think what they do for the rest of the season will inform how they approach this summer and how aggressive they feel they need to be when it comes to making a move this summer. Now, you know, you guys know this very well with what you do. Some of the fan base is not going to be happy about this. We saw this with OG Aninobi. Oh, it's not a big enough name. There's people who want to go star hunting. CP, in your eyes, do the Knicks have to go star hunting? Or should they play it the way J-Mac is talking about and be a little bit patient and see what they have with this current roster? Before this trade for, for Ananobi, I thought it was going to be a smaller trade, another trade on the margins. Maybe they address some of their front court issues, whether it's a center position, backup four, or even maybe they find a wing somewhere. But now that they've made that trade, I still don't see the big ticket item coming in, in, in midseason. It rarely happens that way. I think a, a Mitchell type of trade would happen in the offseason because, uh, you know, with the playing, teams now have incentive to keep going and not yep. pulling everything back. I mean, now you're essentially widening the playoffs of 10 teams, if, if you want to look at it that way. So uh, teams aren't necessarily out of it at, at certain lengths in, in the season. I give Cleveland as an example. Um, so, you know, right now is the time, as Jonathan said, you got to evaluate what they have. See how these three fit. Evaluate Quentin Grimes, Deuce McBride. I mean, from a young talent standpoint, you've already traded two in R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. Um, you've traded some salary out in R.J. Barrett. Mm. So I don't think they make that big ticket item, make big ticket trade by the deadline. I think they stand pat here, go forward with this team and evaluate things at the end of the season. Uh, look, I, I like that. I think it's a good move. I think patience is good. Taking yeah. time to evaluate things is good. We don't always have to rush to get to that next level as though, as we know, some of these fans are impatient. Yeah. They want to get there. Everybody wants tomorrow, yesterday. Knicks you fans? Know, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of that before. All right, last thing, guys, because I appreciate your time and rocking with me as we do this before the new year. But speaking of the new year, when you look at the Knicks and you look at them going to 2024, especially after this OG trade, do you think the Knicks team that we're going to see in 2024 is much improved to the version of the team that we saw in 2023? Because it's literally going to have a different look. Like, yeah. we're literally going to have a different look here. So what do you guys think when you put your prediction hats on? Is this going to be an improved Knicks team, or are we going to pretty much see the same thing? I think this trade makes the Knicks better. Um, I think there are arguments for both sides. I think losing quickly, you know, I, I, I truly do not want to – poo-poo that loss because quickly is so impactful in ways that do not jump off the stat sheet and there's a reason that Nick fans have fallen in love with him really from the day he first stepped foot on the court and showed this flair uh, for the game that we really have, haven't seen here in a long time that they're going to miss that and they're going to have to figure out how to replace that specifically coming off their bench um, all that being said this makes them a more complete team and I think it makes them a team with a higher ceiling and the nice thing about their roster is the minutes crunch that we've been talking about. And it's not just quickly, by the way. DiVincenzo hasn't been getting enough minutes. I mean, this guy's been shooting 50% from three for a month and a half, and he sees like 21, 22 minutes a game. Quentin Grimes, you just brought up a few times. He saw 11 minutes the other night. Like, I know he hasn't had a great season, but he deserves more than that. Those guys are now going to be able to step into slightly bigger roles with Ananobi here. And then I just the last part to answer your question, because what is the next step? The next step is to become a contender. I don't think they're a contender now, but I think now this move opens the door for them to make the one more move to get into contender status. I say they do it this summer. I think they, they complete the whatever it is, whether it's Mitchell or someone else, I think they complete the, the deal. And to that point, the hardest jump in the NBA in terms of roster building and roster construction yeah. is going from playoff team to contender. That is a very hard jump. 
not saying, CP, that they are going to be contender status in 2024 as we go through the rest of the season, but do you agree with J-Mac that they are going to be a better team the way the roster is constructed as the new year starts? In the future, yes. I think there could be some growing pains after this trade, uh, getting Adenobi acclimated. Yes, he's a guy that plays a lot of off ball and can and slide in. Defensively, he'll do his job from a corner three standpoint. He and DiVincenzo will, will certainly be great for them, but the quickly hole is going to, uh, I think that's going to hurt the team as an igniter off the bench, as a playmaker, as a reliable scorer, as that guy that tries to get them back into games late in that third, <laughs> early fourth quarter. How do they bridge that Brunson, Randall, you know, their impact? How do they bridge that to get back to them in crunch time? Who's going to be that guy that really takes over there? You know, Deuce McBride, he's a good defensive player, can spot up here and there, but not a, not a guy that's going to break you down and, and generate much offense there. So, Will Malachi Flynn, you know, have a role with this team? So uh, Tibbs is going to have his hands full kind of addressing that and, and massaging this rotation to make sure that things can continue to flow. Uh, they do have the benefit of having a home heavy schedule in January. So we'll see how, you know, how, how well that, uh, that, that helps them. But I think there could be a little bit of growing pains in the onset. All right. Could be some growing pains. You know, change always happens. That happens sometimes in New Year. But New Year, new Knicks roster. A lot of new content for you guys to talk yeah. about on your platforms. It'll new topics great. to discuss. New topics <laughs> to discuss. Always good in the new year. I want to wish a happy new year to you both. I uh, appreciate you guys coming and rocking with me here. It was so much fun, and we had the great moment that we'll never forget oh, of no. where we were we'll when the OG Ananobi trade went down. We were right here on set. That is Jonathan Macri of Nick's Film School. Check him out. Also, my guy, CP the Franchise from Nick's Fan TV. Hit the like button, the subscribe button for both of these guys. Love their work. Support them. And we wish everybody a happy new year. As I said, happy new year to you both. And we'll see what the Knicks do in 2024. Happy new year, guys. Happy new year. New York Cup game is on fire. All right, that does it for this episode of New York Got Game. As always, special thanks to my guests, CP the Franchise and Jonathan Macri. Those guys did a tremendous job with us to break everything down. Always got to thank the people that make this show possible. My director, Brianna Mutsi Nashiaka, my producer, Lee Insler, and my editor, Antonio Oliveras Nicole. Fantastic job. I want to thank everybody who made this show possible to get underway, get started in 2023. We are going to have bigger and better things coming in 2024 on New York Got Game. Until next time, peace to everybody, happy new year, and blessings. And we'll be back with you for the next episode of New York Got Game. And thanks for watching New York Gut Game. Boom shakalaka.